What's up everybody, before we get started here, I just wanna do a disclaimer. This video is for educational and potentially even entertainment purposes. This is not medical advice. If you do need medical advice, go see a licensed healthcare practitioner. This is for educational and potentially even entertainment purposes only. Now that's out of the way, let's get into this. So why exactly are we making this video today? So first off, um, this channel is all about optimizing the performance and health of the ageless athlete. Um, I would consider myself an ageless athlete along with my fiance, Lauren. So we had a baby uh, 14 months ago and obviously there's a nine month lead up after or toward having a baby. So uh, that's a two year process of suboptimal conditions for health. Add on top of that a pandemic and other life stressors. And we both felt like we weren't the best version of ourselves. And we knew that if we let life continue to kind of dictate whether or not we were going to make an intervention, we would never be making a significant change. So we thought, okay, here's an opportunity for us now that things are kind of getting back to normal a little bit to take a look under the hood and see what things we can work on to optimize our health. Because usually about 20% uh, intervention is 80% of the change. So you don't need too much of a change to really get the maximum uh, or most of the benefits. So for me personally, the first step for me was um, seeing what my hormones were like. I made a video about that before, about getting an HRT, hormone replacement therapy through R3 Health and Joe Radich. Uh, but uh, for me personally, uh, and I'll speak about Lauren uh, in just a second, um, I've always had suboptimal digestion. Um, I've had SIBO, um, gastritis, probably some uh, IBS type symptoms, SIBO is small uh, intestinal bacterial overgrowth. I probably had all sorts of other pathogens and stuff going on, but I wasn't for sure, uh, which is why I wanted to take it to the next level. Now for Lauren, obviously after having a baby, um, you know, hormones kind of get out of whack. Ex uh, weight gain happens during pregnancy. Now she's trying to lose the weight. She's not sleeping well. Um, and just again, she wants to try and feel her best as well, uh, which is why we both took the opportunity uh, to work with Dr. Peter Kozlowski. I had Dr. K on the Fitness, Wellness, and Longevity podcast. If you're interested in listening to that podcast, you can click here. Dr. K is a functional medicine doctor. He is also a medical doctor, an MD. So he has a very unique skill set. And his specialty of gut health is one in which was very interesting to me personally, because I know how important your gut is to not only uh, your digestive health, but also your mental health, your performance, how you recover. Uh, and if you have a whole host of other diseases and issues, it's like the, the foundation of a lot of other things. It's, it's important in your immune system, uh, sexual function. I mean, the gut is connected to everything. And if your gut is not optimal or suboptimal, uh, you're just running, um, you know, with your tires flat, so to speak. So I knew mine would be pretty smashed. Um, I'm absolutely surprised about how bad it was. Uh, given the fact that I meditate regularly, I eat well, uh, you know, a stress reduction as much as possible. Um, I, I don't drink, I don't smoke. Uh, but even that, uh, for me, I'm pretty behind the eight ball from 20 plus years of intense training and really uh, treating my body uh, harshly. Uh, obviously, Lauren has, you know, training background and that kind of stuff as well had a kid. Um, so, you know, she's not working optimally either digestive issues as well. So we, we wanted to get an idea of what exactly we needed. Uh, and the first thing is, um, checking out what your gut is currently doing. So we did a fecal test that was prescribed by Dr. Peter Kozlowski, uh, and we got the results back from that test, uh, along with Lauren getting a blood test to just see what her metrics look like for liver health, kidney health, all that stuff, a metabolic blood panel and, and all that kind of stuff. So you're going to see that in this uh, video as well. Uh, you're going to see the breakdown of our fecal test, exactly what it showed, all the different parasites, all the different bacterial overgrowths, uh, all the, 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 the good, the bad and the ugly about our guts. And also the intervention that uh, Dr. Kozlowski uh, is uh, recommending that we're going to be doing, and we will be doing a follow-up video after this one, after um, a certain amount of time, one to two months, uh, based upon the actual prescription, and you'll see exactly how it goes. But I wanted to highlight how awesome 
this process was, how great Dr. K was um, in terms of like explaining everything, breaking everything down. And hopefully you learn something from this and it might give you some aha moments to like, man, like maybe I should be looking into this stuff as well and potentially working with Dr. K. Dr. K breaking down myself and Lauren's fecal testing along with Lauren's blood work. Enjoy. <laughs> Welcome guys. We got a bunch of lab work to look at. How are you guys feeling? Feeling good. It uh, it was definitely a fun, fun, interesting uh, process as a couple to uh, <laughs> have to manage our poo, but <laughs> like poop samples. Yeah. <laughs> they were in these like little like curly fry containers, so it definitely it's was nostalgic. Like a French fry box. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> That's what I always tell everybody. I'm like, you basically like poop in a French fry box. Yeah. <laughs> who do you, who wants to start? Who do you want to look at first? I'll start. Ladies first. So let's look at your stool analysis. Look at my poop. All right. So in general, the big picture of this test, green is usually good. Yellow is questionable and red is bad. Okay. And the analogy that I give for your micro, so we're looking at your microbiome. What is growing in the three to five pounds of bacteria that are in your large intestine? The analogy I really like is, is your microbiome is like your own garden. And in that analogy, these are the probiotics, which are the plants okay. of your garden. Fiber is a fertilizer of your, is the fertilizer of your garden. What happens in a garden when you don't take care of it is weeds grow. Okay. And that's what the yellow and the red are, is are there weeds growing in your garden? And um, are they pathogenic? Are they associated with disease? What can we do about them? Okay. So in general, most people are familiar with lactobacillus and bifidobacterium because that's usually what's in most probiotics, but you've got a whole range of good bacteria. So this is a culture. So we're seeing how much do they grow? And the maximum that they could grow on this test is four plus. So our optimal is four plus on all of these. Okay. Right? And so you've got three plus bacteroides, two plus. We add up this total, five, eight, 12, 13 plus. Okay. That is low. Um, what the lab has found is that 14 is kind of the cutoff. You should be over 14 minimum. Okay. And um, so we want to replenish that. And they found that people with less than a, a level less than 14 um, have had IBS symptoms. Okay. So the only way to really do that is to balance out what's going on, what, what things can we get rid of, and then how do we replenish? So the next thing is the imbalanced bacteria. We all have these. Everybody has them. Um, they're not all a problem. They become a problem when there's too many of them. Okay. So the total or they're a problem if they show up in the red okay. and if they're a dysbiotic bacteria. So you don't have any of those. So then we add up your total, which is two, six, nine, nine plus. Our cutoff for dysbiosis, which is the term for imbalanced microbiome is 10. So you fall just kind of under dysbiosis, but you're pretty close. Okay. So what the, to like keep it simple is you've got, too many weeds growing and not enough plants in your garden. Okay. Candida is a yeast that can overgrow your gut. We culture for it in the stool, but it tends to die in the stool. So we get a lot of false negatives. Okay. So what the lab does is measure microscopic yeast. Okay. And yours is classified as many. So there, there's not a total consensus around that, um, in regards to do people treat it or not. It, for me, I, I usually attempt to treat it because treatment is very low risk and we see if we can get an improvement. Um, I'm gonna pull up what are possible symptoms of candida or yeast. Okay. I'm looking at this, I'm going, oh man, <laughs> got a few of those. <laughs> yeah. Candida can more or less, I mean, this just kind of shows that it can cause kind of anything. And that's the whole picture of why the gut's so important is because the gut is the gateway to let inflammation in your body. And once it's in your body, it can go anywhere. So if you can relate to a few of those symptoms, then I would try treatment for a month. Our typical treatment is two months. Um, and then we repeat the test. 
Okay. Sometimes three, but usually two. Um, I say a month because we can see how you're doing. If you if you commit to it for a month and you're like, listen, I don't feel any different at all, then maybe that that amount of yeast overgrowth is normal for you and it's not an issue. Okay. But we, we won't really know unless we try to get rid of it. Okay. And and we'll look at the treatment um, at the end. I'll finish going through the results. Okay. Doc, I have a quick question about that. Um, if if a, a, a client of yours is very common to things like yeast infections, especially for females, do you kind of look to candida, candida pretty quickly or at least dysbiosis there? Um, yes. And it, it's, but it's not as prominent as you would think. I have a lot of people that come in, women with like recurrent um, yeast infections and they're like, I have candida or another, a, a, the most common one is a white tongue. Like that people that like, I have a white tongue. Lush or what do they call it? Lush? Um, thrush. Thrush. Yeah. Thrush. Yes. And it rarely is that like the more someone's convinced they have candida, the more likely they don't have it. Um, <laughs> that's been my experience. So I, I mean, I, I'm a gut doctor, so I mean, I'll pretty much test your gut always, but it doesn't correlate as much as you would think. What's interesting for you guys is the parasitology. So they're looking for different um, viruses, pathogenic bacteria, and then parasites. So these are all things that can be a problem. And uh, Lauren, you have a moderate amount of blastocystins. Okay. Um, and there are some people that argue that blastocystis is normal. Uh, I do hundreds of these tests a year, and I see like usually one to two cases a year. Oh, wow. Um, so it's not that common. Oh, wow. Uh, I had that myself when I did my first stool analysis. Um, and it's funny, everything in medicine comes in waves. So I hadn't seen a, a case of parasites in, in 2021. Wow. And then both of you guys tested positive, and then <laughs> another person I saw tested positive. So and it all happened in a week. Um, it's usually from like, drinking water, um, travel. Like, I mean, I, I traveled a lot before I did a stool test and I'm, I'm just pretty sure I picked it up somewhere around the world. Um, I did have a patient who never left basically his farm in Illinois and he had blastocystis. And we think he picked it up from like the stream he used to play in. Wow, yeah. So when or where you got this, Could I be can't anywhere. tell you, um, but we know it's there. and. This is another thing that, you know, not everybody treats. I do recommend treating. The treatment options are either going to be an herbal approach or uh, an antibacterial approach, like a medical approach. Okay. And I, I lean towards the medical because the herbal approach we have to do for three months and then it's not a guarantee it's going to go away. The antibiotic treatment is for three days and it, <laughs> you, it, Every time I've done it, it's gone away. Okay. okay. The main issue is with this with the antibiotic is we're going to be damaging this. Right. right. But now we have a baseline for this, so we know regardless. I mean, this isn't in good shape anyway, so you know we know we're going to do some damage to it. But you can't heal it until you get rid of these weeds that have overgrown. Got right. It. So again, I'll get to the treatment at the end, but. Um, so, so far we've got parasite and yeast overgrowing your gut. Okay. So a, a few more um, parasites. Some of these markers, red blood cells, white blood cells, muscle fibers, vegetable fibers. This is kind of looking at your pancreatic digestion. That, that is functioning normally. If you had a bunch of muscle or vegetable fibers in your stool, it could mean that you're not digesting your food. Okay. But that looks fine for you. Mucus, negative. And then this is your actual pancreatic enzyme called elastase. Your, your pancreas releases multiple enzymes. Elastase is the one that we can measure in the stool. And this is indicating that you're low, which could be a marker of um, you're not digesting. Okay. Now in the greater picture of your stool test, um, you are digesting. So in my experience, usually these pancreatic deficiencies as, as they look 
are usually um, transitory. Like it will repeat a test and it'll come back positive. Mm. But another thing that we can do is get a digestive enzyme. Um, I really like the one from Claire. It's called Vitalzymes. It's the only one that I use. We can add that and see if you notice a difference. Okay. Um, and, but I don't think it, I think it's much higher yield to work on the parasite and the yeast. Okay. Uh, the digestive enzyme is something, again, that won't do any harm. It's an option, but with my experience with this, this is common that it's like randomly low and, and it's not necessarily a problem. Um, inflammatory markers. This is the way we diagnose inflammatory bowel disease like ulcerative colitis or Crohn's in That's your good. stool. Your markers are negative. Good. Secretory IgA. Th this is my favorite one. This is basically your gut's immune response. Mm -hmm. Yours is extremely suppressed, okay. right? And so the range is 30 to 275. Yours is 5.3. You have likely yeast overgrowth and parasites. Why is your immune system not responding, mm -hmm. right? You would, you would expect that number to be really elevated because your immune system's like, we got to get rid of this. Right. Stress. It's the gut brain connection. Okay. There's, there's basically four things I can see on a stool test to see how stressed out someone is. We look at the growth of bifidobacterium, lactobacillus, and enterococcus. If these are one plus or no growth, that is stress. Okay. And so yours is not too bad. But then the, 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 the more important one is the immune marker. And so this is um, low. And so that to me indicates that you've been under chronic stress. And <laughs> I would agree. What my book is all about is basically that gut brain connection and how important that is. And, and that's, that's a warning that I give everybody is if you don't work on the mental, emotional, spiritual part, this will never go away. The yeast will never go away. The parasites might because of the, the treatment, but your microbiome will never restore the way you want it to. Mm. Okay. So that, that is, um, I mean, as a newly a mother that, you know, I'm sure that there's a lot of new stresses and, and it's just going to take some time, but just that understanding that we, we need to always be working on that. Yeah, absolutely. Short chain fatty acids are what your bacteria produce when they eat. So your gut bacteria are alive. They eat fiber. And this is what they produce when they do that. Oh, wow. Then these proteins then go, or these fatty acids then go and work on our cell. They keep our gut lining healthy. They've found, they've done studies and they found the higher your butyrate, the lower your risk of dementia. Wow. wow. So they found an inverse really relationship. So your numbers look good. They're a little That's elevated. Good. That could mean that you just had um, quite a bit of fiber or prebiotics the day before the test. It's not a concern. You want these numbers to be high. What I'm frequently seeing is these numbers are low and cool. then we're trying to stimulate that. Okay. So that is your stool analysis. Um, so I have a, can I ask a quick question? Yeah. So as far as the, on the candida side, so I know you said, you know, obviously addressing the stress. Um, so if we treat the yeast and I don't change my diet, will that come back? It, this is an, an area where I take kind of a different view than a lot of practitioners out there. There's a lot of like obsession over the anti-candida diet. Okay. Right? That you'll never heal candida if you um, if you don't follow this anti candida diet, which I can show you, it's basically a low sugar diet. Okay. Cortisol is your stress hormone, mm -hmm. right? What effects does cortisol have on your body? It suppresses your immune system and causes sugar to be released. What is candida's favorite diet or <laughs> favorite environment? Yeah. A suppressed immune system and sugar. Okay. So my answer is, is to do your best with the diet, but don't get, don't let it stress you out because if you're, that's what I've worked with a lot is a lot of people that, um, are just so focused 
I'm eating the perfect meal to heal the candida. Yep. That if you're just creating that cortisol response over that fear of the meal, you could have the perfect meal and it's, it's going to hurt you. Wow. Right. Wow. So um, I'll open up um, a candida food plan just to kind of briefly look at it. So this is broken down by food group and what you can eat and what to eliminate. So I would focus on the elimination, deli meats, lunch meats, processed meats, peas and peanuts. I'm not, I don't know, the peas, that's one that I wouldn't be too strict about. Okay. Same with the nuts and seeds, I, I wouldn't be that strict about, but you can be. Um, dairy, if you're not sensitive to dairy, I'm okay with it. Uh, just to, like the sweetened sugars are gonna be a problem. Uh, this stuff, like, I mean, we really shouldn't be eating at all, like commercially processed salad dressings, margarine, mayonnaise, canola oil. So this stuff is, you know, um, corn fermented foods. The, the big one is the fruit. People are like, oh, I can't eat fruit because it has fructose in it. It's going to feed the candida. Th there's so many benefits to um, fruit that I, I don't limit fruit. Okay. I, I, if you're doing a proper treatment, the candida will go away. If you're managing stress, you're taking the right stuff. We, you can eat fruit. Okay. But again, this is a guide. And so if it's something that you're like, no, this looks great to me. This is the diet I want to follow. It's not going to stress me out. Then this is what you would follow. Okay. So I guess my long answer or my short answer is just do your best to yeah. try to avoid like added sugars. Okay. Can I ask another question about that? I'm sorry. <laughs> when you okay. say added sugars, um, I just want to clarify, like sugar or sweeteners or both? Yeah. So it, I would say both. You're got, we limit, you definitely want to limit the sweeteners. Okay. So I, I would prefer uh, to just keep them out as much as you can, unless they're from a natural source like fruit. fruit. If you're going to do a little bit of something, it would be like a little bit of stevia, okay. a little bit of honey or maple syrup, something like that, but in small amounts. Got it. Okay. This is our approach to candida. So there are a few facets that we use. One is we can use a medication, which is called Nystatin. A lot of people argue that Nystatin should be an over-the-counter drug that it's safer than ibuprofen. 99% of antibiotics are designed to be swallowed and then your gut digests them and then they get into your blood and they go to your ears, your nose, your throat, wherever. Nystatin doesn't get absorbed. So it just stays in your gut tube. Oh, wow. So the candida is growing in your gut tube. So the Nystatin is working in there. So it makes it very safe and effective. Oh, wow. Some of my patients were like, listen, I don't care. I just don't want to be on any meds at all. And then we use the herbal approach. For somebody with a very significant overgrowth, which I don't think yours is, I would do both. To make life easy, I would probably choose one or the other. These supplements or herbs, oregano oil, garlic, berberine, caprylic acid, grapefruit seed extract, silver, all kill the candida. Our preference is to use three of them, and it could be any of the three you choose. And you take them three times a day. This says for three months. I, I would check in with you after a month to see how you're doing, to see if you're noticing any kind of improvement. Okay. Um, Soil-based probiotics. Probiotics made from organisms from the soil are anti-candidal. So they'll, they'll actually have like an anti-candida effect. Okay. Uh, the there's a few options. The one that I frequently use is called from Body Biotics, but now there's quite a few more options. So um, any kind of soil-based probiotic, and that is at night. So when you are healing the gut, these herbs are taken three times a day. You can't take a probiotic at the same time as those herbs because those herbs are meant to kill bacteria. Mm. So if you take them at the same time, you're going to be just killing your probiotic. Okay. So the typical regimen is to take the herbs throughout the day and then the probiotic at night. 
Got it. So um, if I want to do the nice statin, I wouldn't necessarily. Okay, and I wouldn't necessarily have to do the garlic or oregano oil or yeah, anything. Sure. I wouldn't do the rest of it. No. Okay. I think that's a pretty. So good that idea. I mean that's a definite advantage is is to just take it. It's one thing. It's kind. Of, it's very effective. Um, but again, it's just like a personal preference. I mean, I've seen people heal with nystatin. I've seen people heal with herbs, seen people heal with both. So it's, it's kind of just like what's going to be easier for your life. And for a lot of people taking one thing is easier than three. So a couple of questions about this. So the nystatin safe for if we're trying to get pregnant. Mm -hmm. Um, and then if we do the nystatin, I think it said on that sheet for three months. We'll start with a month and then okay. we'll, we'll reassess. Okay. But yeah, we might go all the way to three. Okay. Um, I'll start, I would start with a month and just see, um, where, how you're doing with that. Okay. That Other questions? Good. I mean, not, not really. I'm kind of excited to see how I feel. Um, at the end of a month, uh, I, I didn't mention the, the, the parasite treatment. Oh uh -huh. yes. Okay. This is, this is good. Okay. I want to so hear this. We use an antibiotic called flagell. The other name for it is metronidazole. It's, it's very frequently used in kind of the regular medical world. Most women, if you ever had like a UTI or some kind of vaginal infection, they, they give you flagell. Um, it has antiparasitic effects. In, when we're using it for like a bacteria, people are on it for like 10 days, 14 days. When we're using it for parasite, it is a very quick treatment at, at a high dose. So it's 750 milligrams, which it comes in 250 milligram capsules. So you're taking three capsules three times a day for three days. Okay. Ooh, smokes. A lot of threes. I did it myself. The main side effect that I got was like a, a metallic taste in my mouth that you could have some, you know, you're, it is an antibiotic. So you're going to have some changes in your gut. You might be more constipated. You might tend towards more loose stools. Um, it can go either way. Um, so if you do have any issues, just check in with me. Okay. But that would be, so the way I would do this is Start with the, the, the flagell, the metronidazole for three days. Okay. Give yourself a break for a couple of days. Okay. And then start the, the yeast treatment. Okay. Because one of the potential side effects of flagell or any antibiotic is a yeast overgrowth. Yeah. Right? So we already know you have one, so we'll just address it after. Okay. Yeah. Cause so I was going to ask that and like to his question earlier. So normally if I am put on an antibiotic, which I haven't in a long time. Um, but normally if I am, I would ask for a, a yeast infection prescription because I always get one when I'm on an oh. antibiotic. Yeah. So we can have one. I, I mean, Nystatin might not be a great option. So we might want to use Diflucan, which is probably what you've gotten. I think that's what I have. Off. It's like the one pill. Yeah. One pill. So we use that on the gut in people with resistant candida, right? Okay. Where we treat it with herbs, we treat it with nystatin, and it doesn't go away. It's usually like once a week for eight weeks. It's a very strong treatment. I, I would really not want to do that for your gut. Okay. But we can have that on board in case you do get a yeast infection. Okay. Another alternative is to skip the medications and just do the herbs for three months and see because there's a chance that the herbs could knock out everything the parasite as That's well a much longer process and not as guaranteed to get results okay um you, you've got options okay i mean i think i'm still you don't have to decide the... now you okay. can tell me later you can you guys can talk about it yep. and then just shoot me an email and be like hey this is what we want to do Give me the pharmacy phone number and we'll call in the medication if that's what you want. The supplements, we can send you a link to the herbs that we use. And then we would check in after a month. Perfect. Okay. And doc, uh, as she's doing the yeast protocol, would she also be in a probiotic in the evening? 
I would do the soil based. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now is that going to be like a Saccharomyces boulardii, or is that a specific blend? Saccharomyces boulardii is the other one that we use for yeast. So soil based is a little bit different. Okay. Um, I like to actually switch probiotics. I don't like to stay on the same thing. So you can do like the first month soil based, second month sac boulardii, then go back to a soil based. I like to mix it up. Yep. To Just to diversity. keep it different. The best thing we know about the gut is the more diverse it is, the healthier it is. So the best way to create diversity is through diet, but, and, you know, supplements are going to have very limited diversity. Um, but uh, they, when we're treating, like when we're going to be using antibiotics, when we're using, yeah. when we're trying to get rid of yeast, I think that, that we use, I, I like to use them for a, a short period of time. Cool. Okay. So that's your gut. That was a lot of info. You doing hanging yeah. in there? Yeah. We've got your blood test done. In your blood work, um, your metabolic profile is basically looking at your electrolytes, your kidneys, and your liver. Okay. Everything looks great here. <laughs> TSH, free T4, free T3 is your thyroid. This is where we take a different approach than your regular doctor. Most regular doctors are just ordering TSH levels. Okay. So... I like to do, um, I like to use pictures. So I'm going to show you this picture of the thyroid. Okay. So this is your thyroid. It sits in your neck. It makes T4, which is converted to T3. It's dependent on selenium, zinc, and then T3 goes and works on your cells. So in order for T3 to work, vitamin A, exercise, zinc are things that improve it. These are all things that block your thyroid function. Okay. Right. So where does TSH fit in here? TSH is the signal from your pituitary gland. Your, your thyroid is like your a heater in your, like your heat in your house. Your brain is the thermostat. You set a temperature for how much thyroid you want. If the, the thyroid levels drop low, the heater is turned on and we make more to catch up. Okay. Right. So TSH is the signal that's telling your thyroid to make more thyroid hormone. So in regular medicine, they assume if your TSH is high, your thyroid's low. I can't tell you how many people I've worked with that have a normal TSH, but their T3 is low. Your levels to me look perfect. Great. You are, so the, the, you, in my opinion, you do not have a thyroid issue. Great. The range of free T3 is between 2.3 and 4.2. You are right in the middle of that range. Your TSH is nice and low. Your T4 is what's being converted to T3. It's Two. at a fine level. Okay. You don't, thyroglobulin antibodies and thyroid peroxidase antibodies are the antibodies that attack your thyroid and create autoimmune disease called Hashimoto's or Graves. You don't have any antibodies. Yeah. Okay. CBC, your white blood cell count, your hemoglobin hematocrit. This is basically looking at your immune system and your blood. Your B12, 200 to 1100. 352 is very low. Okay. And this range is insane, right? Like how, how is two to 1100? <laughs> this is and like alive like, and dead. <laughs> right. And, and here they even say, it has been reported that between five and 10% of patients with values between two and 400 may experience neuropsychiatric and hematologic abnormalities. <laughs> so you could be crazy and like anemic and yet they're still calling it normal. Right. Um, so the, the number that we shoot for is 800. Oh, wow. Okay. And so that is, I, I would go on a B12 supplement. Okay. There's two reasons. There's two main reasons why it would be low. Three, there's genetics, which I don't think it is. I think it'd be lower if it was that. It would be a vegetarian or vegan diet, or it would be low stomach acid. Okay. Which is something that we always work on with the gut. And I'm going to pull up a separate picture to explain low stomach acid. So we're talking about like uh, like hydrochloric acid from the from the gut or from the stomach. Exactly. Hydrochloric acid is how we digest protein, how we get vitamins and minerals out of our food, and how we um, 
kill off bacteria. So you need lots of stomach acid. Very polar opposite approach, right? Because if you walked into your local pharmacy, there's an entire aisle of acid blocking drugs. Yeah. And when you take that, that is, um, that's a disaster because, because then you're blocking all these functions, right? Which are activation of digestive enzymes, protein digestion, killing off bacteria, absorbing minerals. So we test and treat people for low stomach acid. These are symptoms of low stomach acid. Chronic candida infections. The yeast, the candida. Yeah. yeah. Diseases that happen when you have low stomach acid for a long time. These are basically immune and thyroid disorders because your immune system needs vitamins and minerals to function. If you're not digesting, even if your diet's amazing, you're not going to be absorbing. Right. Yeah. Okay. This is how you can test yourself. So I, I, the first one sounds kind of stupid to me. I, I thought it was ridiculous when I first heard about it. Um, baking soda test. This is like a high school chemistry experiment. You mix a quarter teaspoon of baking soda into a few ounces of water, mix it up and drink it on an empty stomach. Baking soda is basic. Your stomach should be acidic. When the base and the acid meet, it creates an explosion and you should start burping. Mm -hmm. It creates gas. So it's like making a volcano in high school or whenever. Um, if you don't burp, then you probably have low acid. <laughs> Remember that? Um, yeah. When we did that together. The next option is what you mentioned is to get a bottle of HCL, hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid is a supplement that it is not normal to tolerate. So you take one capsule and then you eat protein. Somebody with normal stomach acid would get heartburn because you put in acid, your stomach's making acid, so there's too much and it burns. If you tolerate it, like you'll either feel better or you won't feel any different, that's not normal. So if you take an HCL and you're like, oh, that was like taking a vitamin D, that means you're deficient in acid. And so every two days you up your dose, you go from one to two, two to three, until you get some discomfort in your throat. Okay. Let's say that happens after three, then your treatment dose is two. Why does it happen? This gets back to my favorite thing, the gut brain connection. Low stomach acid is a normal part of aging. It is, I see it in teenagers, young adults all the time now. Your gut has a nervous system around it called the enteric nervous system. It is connected to your brain by your vagus nerve. And the vagus nerve sends signals down to your gut and then from your gut up to your brain. It can either be in sympathetic response or parasympathetic response. Sympathetic is stress, fight or flight. Parasympathetic is relax, rest and digest. If we're chronically stressed out, our sympathetic nervous system is telling our gut to not make acid. Okay. So that kind of gets back to the, the big picture of why stress is the most important part in working on your gut. Okay. Yeah. And then, and so, then obviously, Doc, uh, you know, when we talk about stress, obviously there's psychological stress, but then we're also trying to identify and mitigate all the other stressors that are potentially there, like the pathogens in the gut, toxins, heavy metals, all that kind of stuff as well. Exactly. Okay. That's my job to help you figure out. The the other part is your job to work on it and <laughs> make a priority. Is the so would you say exercise would also be a, a stressor? It depends on how much, you know, it, yeah, I'm very pro exercise. Like my mental health goes down the drain if I don't exercise. Mm -hmm. As um, those years. <laughs> and, but some people overdo it. Yeah. yeah. It, like Sean probably overdid it for a long time. Um, <laughs> and, uh, so you have to find the right balance, right? You know? What, what is your right balance? Yeah. And so you kind of have to listen to your body and your body will tell you. Yep. Okay. So it can be good or it can be bad. Just like anything. Too yeah. Much of anything is usually bad. So will the stomach acid increase as we go through these other, the getting rid of the parasite, getting rid of the yeast? It'll increase as you work on the stress. Okay. That'll, that's the main factor. Some people supplement HCL for like a week. Some people are on it for years. Okay. So at least they're digesting. You know you don't, 
Uh-huh. At least they're digesting at that point, which could be like a feedback thing mm-hmm. because you're not digesting. Now you're stressed. You kick that on and then now you're digesting and now all of a sudden you're like, oh, wow, we're feeling a little bit better. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you'll, you'll know, like if your dose right now is two and, um, if all of a sudden in three weeks you take two and you feel like some discomfort, that's a good thing. Okay. That's the sign that your body's making it again. Yep. Next we've got. So, and then the B12 supplement, I'm going to recommend something. We usually use a thousand micrograms a day. It could be in a B complex. It could be on its own. It could be in a multivitamin. Okay. Um, but the, that'll come up as you support your stomach acid. Okay. Ferritin is your stores of iron. That number is 80. An optimal number that we look for is between 50 and 100. Okay. So your Perfect. iron looks great. Great. Good. This is your female hormones. And we tested these in the second half of your cycle. Yeah. Right? So around day 22, 21 to 23. In the, the cycle, day one is the first day of bleeding. Yeah. Right. So that's when you start counting. In the first 15 days, your body makes estrogen and no progesterone. In the second 15 days, you make estrogen and progesterone. What we're looking for is a condition called estrogen dominance. Okay. You're not making too much estrogen. You're making too little progesterone. Uh, These are common symptoms of estrogen dominance. Okay. Is that also like uh, P, uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome as well there, Doc? Definitely. Okay. Mood swings, brain fog, insomnia. <laughs> My God, man. Breast tenderness. <laughs> so... In, I don't think this it's like this in the regular world, but in my practice, in probably 75% of premenopausal women that I see are estrogen dominant. Okay. And why? It's our environment. It's the toxins, it's the lead, it's the mercury, it's the gut issues, it's the processed food. So us as men are getting low testosterone, women are getting estrogen dominance. Okay. And it's the regular this is so common i mean and it usually starts for girls when they're teenagers they go to their doctor and they get put on birth control yeah. right? and you <laughs> yeah. stay on birth control until you get married and you're ready to have kids and then you come off of it and you're like holy cow my cycles are a mess mm-hmm. and, um, if i if i recall correctly then doc so when you go on birth control is that progesterone that they're putting you on uh, like or is different it different types it's usually estrogen sometimes it's both Sometimes it's just, for, it's, it, it can vary. Yeah. So that means though, then if, if you get off of your uh, birth control, then your body's probably down regulating the actual natural production, which would then throw off everything, right? Exactly. Uh, okay. So it's like a guy who's on tea who just stops taking tea and then he wonders why he feels like garbage. Right. Okay. Yep. <laughs> yep. So the progesterone is the most important number. The FSH and LH are like your TSH. They're signals from the brain to the ovaries. These numbers are normal. Your estrogen is normal. Your progesterone is 6.6. We are in the luteal phase. The number that we want is 15. Some doctors use 10. So to me, you are estrogen dominant. Okay. And... The problem, so I, I think that this is an issue for you. The problem is, is that it's not that easy to treat. Okay. Um, this is how we treat it. Lots of sex. <laughs> <laughs> There's the basics and probably the worst thing on your estrogen progesterone ratio in the estrogen dominance is the stress. So again, I'm seeing another thing that probably has been contributed to chronic stress. Okay. There are basically beyond like the basic stuff, which is healing your gut. I've seen a lot of women that are estrogen dominant have candida. So there could be an association there. Okay. Um, Supplements or hormone replacement. Because different supplements are kind of listed and what they do, 
If there's one that's going to work, it's going to be chassberry. It decreases estrogen, increases progesterone, oh, wow. helps menstrual regularity, and eases cramps. Oh, wow. What women with severe symptoms that we looked at before, what they really benefit from is progesterone replacement. Okay. So again, just like a man taking testosterone or a, a man or woman taking, uh, or a woman taking testosterone or taking thyroid medicine, we are replacing something that your body's deficient. In. Um, progesterone is only taken in the second half of your cycle. Okay. okay. So you have to um, track your cycle. You start on day 14 and you continue until day 28 unless your cycle, unless your period starts. So if you start early on day 26, that's the last day of the progesterone Got it. and you reset the timer. Okay. There's a number of women that are like, I don't want to take hormones. I want to try the natural route. I just met with someone earlier today who has been on chasberry and these other magnesium, calcium for three months now, and nothing has improved. And that, that a lot of times is my honest experience is, is um, progesterone is hard to get up with the supplements, but mm. some women really want to try it. Okay. Um, just like, you know, with thyroid or testosterone, you can replace it or you could try to support it. One major risk of the progesterone is, are we going to shut down your body's ability to make it on its own? Yeah. Right? And you're not at a level that's in the tank. Like I, I work with women that are at like one, two, zero, three. And when they're at that, I'm like, listen, your body's not making it anyway. Yeah. So who cares? Like if we, sh you know, we're not shutting anything down. That's not already shut down. Mm -hmm. So with your level of 6.6, .6, um, you know, in working on your gut, in maybe taking the chasberry supplement, you might see some benefit. And then if we don't, then that we can try a more aggressive option. Okay. But because your level is not that low and there's other things we can work on. Yeah. I think it would make sense to try to hold off for now. Okay. Vitamin D33. This is another crazy range. We shoot for 60 to 100. Okay. So to me, you are vitamin D deficient. These are all the things that happen when you are vitamin D deficient, um, what your level is and what risks you have. So you're right at that 30 level. This says 50 to 80. I, I shoot for 60 to hundred. Um, so we want to get the vitamin D up. So it would be with a D3 slash K supplement. Okay. Um, I would be on either five or 10,000 a day units okay. for three months and then repeat the test. Okay. Doc, specifically in terms of the vitamin D, is there one that's more uh, absorbable? When it's mixed with K. That's what you want um, to look for. Yeah. Yep. Um, there's the one that I've used the most is from Metagenics. That one usually works, but there's some people that's just, it's, it's really hard to get the vitamin D up. Yeah. But Usually mixed with K. Got it. So that's it. That's good. I passed. <laughs> <laughs> You're alive. Yeah. So definitely good thing you did that testing. There's quite a bit going on and quite a bit that you can improve on and you know, you'll feel better. Yeah, absolutely. Do, do you see um, estrogen dominance for women playing a factor in them getting pregnant or, or, or keeping pregnancy? Yeah, if you're you need progesterone to get pregnant. Okay. So I'd love to. Pregnant. I wonder what my levels were when I got pregnant. Yeah. I'd be curious. To see. I mean, it, you're you're making some, and there's women. I think with us, there's plenty of women with estrogen dominance that get pregnant. Yeah. If they're lucky, but if you're dealing with infertility, it's definitely. I mean, a hormonal imbalance is definitely something you want to address. Yeah. Cool. All right. So I will be sending you treatment documents Very and cool. a plan. Awesome. Sean, you should be easy now. Then. Yeah, we've gone through most of it. So I guess for me, it's just kind of uh, the, the ones that are different and showing how much I uh, am great and I have all this great stuff going on. It's just great. <laughs> <laughs> so your chronic stress levels are, are worse than mine. <laughs> Doc, I, I meditate for an hour a day. <laughs> There's got to be something more than it could be physical. Uh, Bifidobacterium is two plus. 
no growth lactobacillus, no growth enterococcus. Damn it. It doesn't mean that they're not in your gut. It means that <laughs> usually the stress is suppressing them from growing out of culture. Yeah. Then you've got kind of the classic uh, combo with the secretory IgA is very suppressed. Yep. <laughs> and that is another um, stress thing. Besides that, we've got candida growing. Now, the lab reports one plus candida as being um, normal. If this were to go to two plus, then it's not normal any longer. <laughs> so we, I always treat this. Yeah. They did sensitivity testing on your candida. Uh, they treated it with different herbs, nystatin, diflucan that we talked about to see what kills it. And for you, you're lucky that basically everything but garlic and oregano will kill it. Yeah. So you've got lots of options. Yep. That's great. So your treatment options are the same. It's nystatin or herbs or both. Yep. You have two parasites, blastocystis and entamoeba <laughs> part mine. Um, I would recommend just th the same treatment, the flagell three times a day for three days. Yep. And let's try to wipe it out. Yeah, let's, let's in. repeat this in two months. Yep. So I want you to stick to treatment for two months. And then we take a break for two weeks. And then we do the test. We test again. Okay. And then we'll adjust. I mean, most people by that point, they're in good shape. Cool. Okay. They also just detected the many yeast, which kind of connects with the, the yeast in the culture. No autoimmune disease, short chain fatty acid. Your butyrate levels are lower uh, that could be just because you have less good bacteria yep makes sense so the one so the treatment looks the same but one thing i forgot to mention is um the best thing for boosting your immune system in your gut is uh glutamine yep so you might have used it in like bodybuilding and stuff that they use glutamine yeah we use it at a very high dose to boost the immune system and heal leaky gut. Okay. And you, ti and you grams, titrate up? Five grams, three times a day. Glutamine when it's in capsules is usually 500 milligrams. So you would need to take 10 capsules three times a day. Glutamine in a powder yeah. is five yeah. grams per teaspoon. Yeah. Okay. So it would be one teaspoon three times a day. And I would do this for two months to try to get this boosted. Yep. It'll help you fight off the, the candida and the parasite. Got okay. it. And Lauren, you can also take that because your levels were also low. Okay. Can that I ask is, a question? What's going on in your gut? So I don't know if you've ever done like couples before, but do you think that our results are so similar because we're like eating a lot of the same stuff and, and sharing a lot of the same bacteria? Yeah. <laughs> And parasites. Yeah, it, 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 it's actually an interesting study uh, to do. Um, yeah, yeah, I work with a lot of families. I okay. Mean, usually, when one person comes to see me, the, the other people in the family are interested. They're I'm like, your oh, germ. Yeah, you, he gave me the parasite. I know that for sure. <laughs> I'm going to agree that's with you. Definitely what happened. <laughs> it's Paul. <laughs> All right, so you would say so it probably would have been like you guys could have been on a trip together somewhere, right? Or yep, we did go to Belize, water. we went to Denver, we went, you know, went to yeah. New York and all that kind of stuff. We live in Florida, so you know how there's probably all sorts of stuff. We live on a canal too, so <laughs> you know, you, you wake up one morning, you don't know what's going to crawl yeah. out of that thing. Anyway, um, so your recommendation <laughs> would be to wipe out the parasite with that three day, take yep. a couple days off, and then you would start the gut healing protocols. Because I've been doing the that list of supplements, so I'll get the script filled. Do the parasite. If you're doing okay on them, then you can just add in the, the antibiotic. Okay, I will say right. that I think my I've uh, start. I, I felt like generally tired this week since I've started that uh, protocol, which may be okay. a good thing, or I don't know if it's a. There's, I mean, there's going, a lot of times it's a good point with functional medicine is you don't necessarily feel better right away. Yeah. Right. A lot yeah. of times people feel worse before they get better. Yeah. yeah. So just, so just a noticing. We're doing this to feel better. We're doing this to balance your body out, yeah. which then, then you'll feel good. Yep. All right, cool. 
so yeah, I, I think uh, doing the, um, the 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 hydrogen bomb to get rid of the uh, parasites and then getting on the gut protocols. Yeah, I'm down Go with ahead. that. And then, like you said, we'll retest. So we're gonna retest the poop, not the blood. Yes, your blood looked. I mean, if your hormonal issues get worse, mm -hmm. which I hope they won't, they should get better. Yeah. Um, yeah. Then we would run. We could run that again. Okay. But the rest of that stuff, I mean, well, like your B twelve. I mean, if you're supplementing it, there's not a toxic B twelve level. Right. So you stay on it. Vitamin D, we could check in on. So we could check in on vitamin D, B twelve. And that, that that and then your hormones maybe, but like your thyroid is not a concern. That's great. Okay. That's your really good. Your electrolytes, your liver, your kidneys, all of that is is great. Good. Good. It's really good to know. Good. It's good to know that like and to have that peace of mind. Yeah, the dementia piece is interesting because it runs in my family. So the 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 biggest thing for dementia is is heavy metal. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm curious That's to see what that measure. looks like. Yeah. Yeah, okay. and we are going to do that next week. Obviously, Lauren was on her cycle, so we couldn't do it just yet. So we're going to do it the first thing next week, yeah. and we'll send it in. And and maybe we'll do a follow up if there is anything to, remarkable. And if not, then obviously I just you know I knew this was kind of phase one of things. Right. Awesome. So this I'll send great. you all these documents, um, and just email me the the pharmacy where you want me to send the prescriptions. Okay. Perfect. This was so, awesome. Oh, good. Very thorough. I really appreciate it. This was great. Yeah, I tried to be thorough. Yeah. It's a breath of fresh air relative to some of the other things uh, yeah. that we experience and uh, also getting to the source of the issues instead of saying, well, take this and you should feel you know, like it might work, <laughs> you know, so yeah. we appreciate it, Dr. K. Yeah, this is great. Thanks again to Dr. Peter Kozlowski for helping out in this video and helping Lauren and I optimize our health. Uh, this was a lot easier to do working with Dr. K because he is so knowledgeable uh, and also so warm, friendly, and uh, open to explain exactly what's going on uh, as, as long as or as slow as it takes for, for his patients. Um, if you'd like to work with Dr. K, I'm going to leave the link down below in this description, uh, or you can go to this website right here. He also has a book called Unfunk Your Gut. So if you want to just get started in terms of learning about gut health, proper gut health, it is an awesome resource for anybody who's trying to optimize their health. And it's a great first step if you're not looking to go diving into your poop, which Lauren and I did. Um, yeah, so we will be making a follow-up video to this one after about a month to two months, uh, especially after we retest and see what our guts look like after the protocols that were recommended in the video. So if you like this video or you learned something, make sure you give it a thumbs up down below and while you're there, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can stay up to date on all of our latest content. One last thing, leave a comment below of what you'd like to ask Dr. K or what other information you'd like for us to provide in our experience with not only the fecal testing, but also uh, the supplemental protocols and then how we feel or any other that kind of stuff. So we're open to answering any questions. So leave those down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching everybody and have an awesome day.